Uh, hello everyone and welcome to BFW2401. This is week three and we are talking about secretization. In this part, we will try to talk about secretization as a concept and we will try to talk also about the secretization vehicles, which is very important to understand the whole process of secretization. Now, please don't mix between secretization and loan sales. Also, they do the same purpose. Secretization is backing the loans, selling the loan, but packing them in bonds. And when we say bonds, it becomes a security that can be sold inside the country or outside the country. And there will be a special uh, purpose vehicle to do the securitization, which is the middleman between the issuer, the bank, and the investors. Now, this is, if you can look at this slide, we are talking about uh, a generator, which is a financial institution who will generate those loans and he will sell them to special purpose vehicle. Now, the special purpose vehicle rule actually is to take all those loans. They have to be synchronous um, loans, which means uh, when we talk about synchronicity in this case, we are talking about loans of the same nature, same interest rates, same maturity. You can back them. This is a perfect setting for securitization. You can make them now like a bond because they all have all the assets inside, have the same return, have the same maturity, and have the same risk. Now you can back them as a bond and sell them. Who does that? The special purpose vehicle in this case, which is uh, the middleman in this uh, in this process. Now, the special purpose vehicle can be built by the bank, or can be different party, like what we have here in Malaysia, Kagamas. Kagamas is taking all the loans from the Islamic banks and commercial banks in this country, back them and sell them to investors, and uh, uh, pay the money to the banks. Now, the third party is the investors, and the investors can be one investor, but investors, remember, they have portfolios, which means they can buy this bond today and sell them tomorrow. They can buy them and trade them. So actually, we have one more than one investor. And whoever hold the certificates of those bonds or uh, securitized assets, they can um, uh, receive their payments from the special purpose vehicle. So we have one special purpose vehicles and we have so many investors who are trading these uh, loans who are already backed in bonds. One thing to remember in this case, that loan, which was very, very illiquid, that cannot be cashed before its maturity, now it's very liquid, which means I can trade it in the market from the second day among investors. And this is very good for actually uh, liquidity supply in the market. Uh, this, is, this is, if you look at this slides, you can look to uh, two process. The first process is when we do the, when the security is issued and transferred to the investors, uh, through the special purpose vehicle. And the second part is when we, during the life of the security, which means now we have a pool uh, of borrowers. Now those borrowers will pay to this pool. This pool will go to the special purpose vehicle and then transfer to the investors. And otherwise, let me give you this small example. If I have 300 loans, of 1 million for 300 borrowers for 30 years. Now, in this case, I will have 300 borrowers for 300 million. I will sell them today for 300 million to the investors. And this is what's happening. The issuer, which is the bank, will give it to the special purpose vehicle. Special purpose vehicle will give it to the uh, investors and they will pay 300 million and it will go to the bank. During the life of this loan, which is the next 30 years, if the payment is monthly, 
which means 360 payments, 12 months times 30 years, every borrower will do 360 payments. So in every month, that money will be collected in a pool and given to the special purpose vehicle and the special purpose vehicle will transfer it to the investor. So the loop is closed now uh, within this process. Uh, having said that, um, let me tell you we have major forms of securitization. Actually, we have the best through security, which is the most common one and easy one to understand. And we have the uh, CMO, which is collateralized mortgage obligation. And we have something called MBB, which is uh, mortgage-backed bonds. Now, let me just give you um, this example. Um, look, and this is actually one of the reasons why we need securitization. If we have an average size of mortgage of 300 million, uh, 300,000, and we have a size of a mortgage portfolio of 30 million, and the average mortgage interest rate is 8%, now you have a capital requirement uh, for those assets, which is actually 10% after the conversion, we can talk about this in week 11, but just take it now as a number. I need actually a capital for those type of assets uh, of 1,575,000. Now, uh, if the bank holds 5% of the value of, the of, of the, this loan portfolio, that is 1.5 million as cash reserved with central bank, so in this case, actually, the total fund required to be raised through the liabilities 30 million plus the capital minus uh, um, 30 million plus the uh, deposits uh, minus the uh, uh, capital, which is, I will come back, I will end up with uh, 29.925. So actually the issues of raising this money of capital and also for the um, uh, uh, loss loans, I will have a liquidity problem, right positive during gap, and I have a large um, capital requirements. Therefore, um, securitization is the solution. Now, let me come back to the best through. So the best through, as you can see, it's the normal, it's the normal process. You have the generator, the issuer, of the of the of the loans, it will goes to it will go to the uh, it will go down to the special purpose vehicle, and from the special purpose vehicle, it will go to the investors. And if the process is okay, and nothing has disturbed this payment during the life of the uh, loans, then uh, the payments will come. And the flow of liquidity will be very smooth where the borrowers will pay in monthly payments and on time and we can give to the investors. But we have some problems called prepayments. And these prepayments is one of the most important issues and most, most of the biggest challenges faced by the special purpose vehicle means people can sell their houses. People can stop, uh, do uh, payments, not because they are defaulting or because of credit risk, because they just don't want the loan anymore. And one of the reasons why this is happening is because people move among states, among countries, they give it to other people, and that's actually not a problem. I can just um, substitute one borrower by another borrower. The problem is when I give a loan today with 4% or 8% and later on when the interest rate decreases, it goes to 4%. And this is what happened during the financial crisis, which means now I am holding a loan, paying 8% while the current rate is 4%. So the thing I will do is I will just go and sell the loan, repay the loans now and take a new loan for 4%. Now this is, can be a good news for the bank in a way that they can receive their money uh, earlier. 
and the special purpose vehicle can take the money earlier. But there is so many problems here, which means one of the coupon payments that goes to the investors has been decreased by one payment. And this can create a defaulting from the part of the special purpose vehicle. And the other thing is when I come and take this money and invest it again, I will invest it with the new low rate. That is big challenges for the special purpose vehicle. And therefore, special purpose vehicle have to have very, very sophisticated uh, modeling to forecast the prepayments. In other words, if I know that the prepayments is 5% or more, I don't have to sell 100% of the loans. I can sell only 90% and if there is, and I can keep those prepayments uh, um, um, uh, as an extra uh, loans that I don't have to sell if some of them come with prepayments. So this is the whole issue with the with the prepayments. And actually this applies to the best through and applies to the CMO and the MPP. Now, let me um, uh, talk about another issue here, which is um, assumable mortgages. Assumable mortgages, I just mentioned it before. And it's actually, when we say assumable mortgages, Although we have another uh, buyer of the loan, but actually we don't have a problem of prepayments. So the prepayments, the, the, the new buyer will actually pay the rest of the loans. Now let's go a little bit to the calculations. Just to recap what I have said, even in part one, when we talk about loan sales, we have to take care of the present value of the annuities and the principal, which means now there is a buying and selling between two parties, which is the issuer of the loan and a buyer of the loan. So the thing that they have to settle is the price, which we call it the present value. So just take it as a rule from now. When we are talking about loan sales, we, are, we want to calculate the present value, which means the price today. When we talk about securitization, the case is different because we are concerned now, the investor is concerned uh, of how much he will be paid. And therefore, if you look at this formula, we are not calculating the present value, but we are calculating the payment. So we are using the Payment for the uh, formula of the uh, annuities, we are talking about calculating the payment, not the present value of the pool. Okay, let's have an example for the pass through. As I told you, we have three vehicles. So in this pass through, we have a size of a pool which is 100 million. This is the actually the value of the loans in the present value. This loan is for 30 years. Uh, number of monthly uh, payments is 12, which means it's a monthly payments. And the annual uh, mortgage coupon rate is 12%. Now, in this case, if I want to get the, uh, if I want to build this amortization table, and as you can see, amortization table now will be at 360 payments. Now, for 360 payments, I need to calculate the pool, which is 100 million, so I will put it in column one, as you can see. So the outstanding balance will be 100 million. Now I want to calculate the fixed monthly payment, which is, as I told you, this is what the investor will receive. So I will use the annuity, and in this case, I will get the 1 million uh, 200, uh, 1 million 28,000. 610. So this is the payments, and these payments will be in column two for uh, 360 months or 360 period. Now, these payments will be divided into parts. One part will cover the interest, and one part will cover the uh, payment from the principal. So as you can see, I can calculate the interest which is the interest coupon is the uh, 100 million um, times 12% over 12 months, 
it's 1 million. So actually, if you look at my um, uh, first month, uh, my payment is 1 million 28610. Interest coupon is 1 million. So the principal payment is 28610. And then the principal at the end of the first month is 99 million. 971,390. Now this will be actually the beginning balance for period two. And so we can continue like this uh, uh, in this table until we reach. Of course, if you can use Excel, Excel can do that for you. It's just you have to understand how to calculate the uh, monthly payments and the uh, interest coupon. This is a basic and traditional and typical calculation for the pass-through. Um, the, um, this is the best through security, as I told you, the prepayment risk. As you can see in this graph, the prepayment function will increase if the difference between the original interest and the current interest is negative, uh, is positive. And if the a difference between the, which means if the, if the current interest is higher than uh, the uh, original interest, nobody is willing actually to retire their loans and take new loans with higher interest. But the case is different. If the interest rate now is higher, is lower, and the original interest rate was lower, then people have actually tendency to go and retire their loans and take new loans with the new low rate. Um, so this is how this actually figure 8.6 uh, explain this function of the prepayments. Let me now go to the second one, which is the CMO. Now CMO, which is, um, it's basically the same. When you take the pass through, you take the pass through and you just break it now to class A, class B, class C, class Z, and class R. Why we do that? Why? And this is uh, what we call a financial engineering by the special purpose vehicle. So you have now banks, you have mutual funds, you have insurance companies, you have individual investors. All of these people have different appetite of liquidity. So in this case, if I am able to, instead of giving one class of investors 12%, I can go and sit, talk to the bank and I tell them, instead of putting your money in a very short term and receiving 5% or 4%, I'm willing to give you 8% or 7% if you are keeping it with me for six months or one year. Remember, my original rate was 12%. I'm giving the bank the 8% and they are happy about it. I can go to the mutual fund who will receive short to mid term, which is from one year to five years, and give them 10%. And then I will go to the insurance companies and EPF and all those people who are willing and able to wait for 30 or 40 years and give them 13%, not 12%. Now, if you take the average of those paid to the banks and to the mutual funds and to the long-term investors, if you collect all of them, the interest paid by the special purpose vehicle and the CMO is actually less than what we pay when we have only one class through the pass-through. Where the difference goes, special purpose vehicle get that money. So this is why we divide uh, uh, investor to classes because we want investor, we want to actually to uh, uh, um, satisfy the um, liquidity appetite of different investors and market most of those securities. The other thing is, which we already talked about it, is the prepayments. Now the prepayments issue, if I have prepayments and the CMOs, because there will be too much prepayments. Now, and if there is too, too much prepayments, I will pay it to the first class. And securitization according to CMO is like this. When I have class A, class B, class C, 
uh, and class uh, Z and class R, I will pay all the classes the interest, but I only will pay to class A the interest and the principal for everyone. So I'll take the principal, which is supposed to pay to everyone, and pay it to the first uh, uh, a class until I retire it, and then go to the class B, class C, class D. This is why I'm able actually to retire investors uh, in the classes very fast. Look at this example. We have um, uh, 200 million and we have tranche A, tranche B, and tranche C. Now tranche A uh, is 50 million, tranche B is 100 million, and tranche C is 50 million. So as you can see now, what I will pay for tranche A is actually the interest and the principal of all those three tranches. But I will pay B in this example, only the interest, which is 333,000. And for uh, tranche C, I will pay 375,000, which is the uh, coupon. So the coupons will be received by everyone, but the principal will be received by tranche A. What is the results? The results, I will be able to retire um, um, uh, tranches uh, in sequence, which means I will retire tranche A faster, and then tranche B later, and tranche C later. And this is what I am saying. If the banks, for eight months or one year, I also the security is 40, 30 years, I can actually retire them in one year, and then give them this 8% or 7% less. Um, that's, that's about it. Um, we can have another example here, but actually I want you to look at the uh, case one. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, I want to, uh, uh, this is another example to show you how much the um, special purpose vehicle make during this process. As you can see, they are taking 60%, 8.5, and then um, they pay 70 billion, but if they break the tranches to A and B and C and pay 6%, 9%, 9.5%, actually they are making uh, a difference of 250,000. They used to pay 70 million, now they are paying only 16, 750. Um, the last one uh, which I want to talk about is the mortgage-backed bond, which is MVB. This is nothing to do about the calculation is still the same. It's only when we take the money, it's only when we take the loans under the best through and securitization, we actually take it out of the balance sheet of the bank. And CMMO uh, and the uh, what we call mortgage-backed bonds, we keep it inside the balance sheet. So actually, the, 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 the mortgage still has a debt inside the balance sheet and doesn't leave the balance sheet. This is the only difference between MBB, CMO, and the Bastro. So this is my final slide, and we are talking about the benefits and cost of securitization as everything has benefits and costs. Now, I think I have touched on the benefits before when we, when we started here, when we started uh, um, part two, but let me just recap a little bit. So, um, um, securitization will bring us uh, new funds. Uh, they will bring us also increased, uh, they will fix our liquidity requirements and staple it. Uh, and of course, we will uh, manage our duration gaps, whether we are talking about duration gaps or repricing gaps. And uh, it will uh, decrease uh, our reserve requirements, the central banks. And if we are doing uh, deposit insurance for our um, savers, now this deposit insurance premiums will be uh, um, uh, not needed. Uh, and therefore, also the capital requirements will not be needed. So we have those, all those assets out of the balance sheet. Every cost with those assets like capital, like reserve, like deposit insurance will not be uh, there. And this, in this, we can save some cost. Um, 
Now it has some shortcomings of uh, the securitization and actually uh, it's related to the costs. So um, we have to do insurance uh, for public and private uh, uh, risk um, and guarantees to the investors. We have to do uh, cost of uh, over uh, collateralization, which means when we talk about the MBB, uh, actually uh, we have to issue, we have to keep in our balance sheet 120% of what we uh, issue as bonds. And of course the expenses that goes to the uh, special purpose vehicle um, regarding the valuation backing and the cost of uh, has asset heterogeneity. Asset heterogeneity, I think I talked about it before, which means we have to have uh, very heterogeneous assets with the same interest, same uh, uh, duration and same uh, uh, risk. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we'll see you in the following lectures.